On today's Toy Spot, we're having a look at the NECA Rambo figures. We're looking today at First Blood, John J. Rambo. Depicted from the very first Rambo movie, down below there is the poster, the original poster says Stallone, this time he's fighting for his life, first blood. I am so happy, so very happy that NECA has acquired the rights to the Rambo franchise. I think initially when I heard that they were going to do Rocky, as happy as I was with Rocky, I really was thinking, okay, if, they've, if they're doing Rambo, if they're doing Rocky, I really hope they're going to do Rambo, and sure enough, we're now getting Rambo figures. Now, I am stoked to get First Blood uh, Part 1. I'm really looking forward to a Rambo First Blood Part 2 because that's for me when I really got into Rambo. Um, I was just at that right age and then for some reason it spun off into cartoons which was the strangest thing. Um, the packaging wise we've got Rambo featured in his woodland environment. Some trees going on down there as well. Looks like he comes with a couple of accessories also, which is good. On the back, it says, John J. Rambo, an ex-Green Beret, haunted by memories of Vietnam, is searching for an old friend he served with in the war. Instead, Rambo crosses paths with an overzealous small-town sheriff who is looking for a fight. Unjustly imprisoned, Rambo escapes and becomes the target of a massive manhunt. Rambo must use all his cunning combat and surviving survival skills to stay alive and outwit his pursuers. That's a really good read-up. Really good read-up. And again, this comes to us from the good folks at NECA. What I am going to do is take a break. I'm going to get this opened up. And when we come back, we're going to get a better look at Rambo from First Blood. Stay tuned. And with Rambo, the accessories that you'll get, for starters, you get a, a knife. Be, not maybe even the more iconic knife that he was known for later on, but you still get a knife. It look, it's actually, uh, it looks quite sharp. Um, it's got somewhat of a point to it, so I would say be a little careful of it, but detailing is definitely there. I mentioned this at the time that I did the Lone Ranger, which I don't know if I'm uploading that first or this, this uh, review first. But I have to say that, as of late, NECA has really impressed me when it comes to uh, metal. I know that's such a small thing to say, but uh, when it comes to, like, metal paint, they've really impressed me. I mean, that looks like it's real metal. It's not. It's plastic, and it is well, got fragile, so, I mean, you have to be a little careful with it. It's got a green handle there. He can hold it. Um, you can't put it into his hand. Like so. Um, it sits relatively well, or you can also take it, just move his arm out of the way, you can take the knife and put it also in his side knife holder there, which is probably where I'm going to put it anyways, because the other cool accessory he comes with is a machine gun. I'm not quite sure the actual f real full name for this gun, but uh, certainly an iconic weapon for him in the original uh, first Blood. It also, uh, he also does come with a secondary uh, hand, which I suppose would probably lend itself better to holding the knife than the ones that he's got in his hand right now. Um, you can take the rifle. I say rifle, you can take the machine gun here. And you can peg it into his hand. You could probably, with a little finagling, get him to fully hold the machine gun in both hands. But, or you can kind of have him just... <laughs> and there you have Rambo. I like it. Now, here's the thing. Let me level with you. There's the machine gun. I'm going to put that aside for a second. I'm going to level with you. I really want to love this figure. I really want to love this figure. But there's problems to it that I'm having a tough time with. 
And perhaps maybe I might be the only one that believes this, but we'll, we'll see and you guys can let me know down below. For his face, I think is a really good face sculpt of Sylvester Stallone. He's kind of got that, they've given him the same thing that they're kind of doing lately with a lot of their figures. They're giving him that kind of sweaty plastic look, making it look like his skin. He's really, really sweaty and, and all that. The thing is, though, as good of a face sculpt it is, I find sometimes when you give him the really, really shiny plastic, he kind of loses some really good paint details. And I don't know if it's just me, but I find almost as if because he's using this kind of plastic, even if he's not, I feel as if his face almost has a translucency to it, even if it's not necessarily there. I just feel as if it's almost looking as if it's somewhat translucent. Now he's got his bandana on, which is not the iconic red bandana, but he's got a, a bandana going on there as well. And the sculpt in his hair is really solid also. Another point that I really want to make, and I'm not sure I'm not sure how this happened, but I feel like he's proportioned a little weird. For case in point, I feel like his neck, and I don't know if it's maybe just because he's got the, well, you know what, even if I move the military, even if I move the military, even if I move the, the uh, ammunition belts out of the way, I feel as if his neck is just a little too short. Something seems off on the neck. Like, I feel like the head should be just slightly more up. The thing about Sylvester Stallone, whether it be Rocky, uh, or really the Rambo movies, he was always really a skinny, ripped actor. He was never a broad, broad actor. Of course, he got broader as he got later on in his career, but he was never really a broad actor. He was always very ripped, very toned. I feel almost as if this figure depicts him as if he was a little stockier than really what he is. Um, I feel like the neck should have been just a little bit longer. I mean, the sculpt on the neck is really done well. Despite the fact, though, that the face, I feel like the coloring in his face is slightly off than the rest of his body. He's got a lighter coloring in his face, but then when you get to his arms and you get to the rest of his body, it seems like it's more of a, a pinkish color. I'll get into that in a second. But I really feel like his neck should have been a little longer. The other problem I have, speaking of proportions, is that there's something that goes on right around here, and I don't know if it's just strictly his belt, this additional ammunition belt that he's wearing, but I feel like the figure looks a little pudgier than that of what he should have been in the movie. Now I understand that he's got like a t-shirt on and it's probably a little looser and it's not quite fitted to him that he would be normally a skinnier guy. But I feel almost as if like the I almost feel like the torso is either not long enough or it's not skinny enough to properly convey the idea of Rambo. I I, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like something's going on here. He, like, even at his waist. Like, I feel like his torso should have been just a little more narrow. And even at the waist area, I feel like his waist is a little too broad. Um, the head works, the legs work, but something around here makes him look really stocky. Uh, even on the back, he's got a lot of junk in the trunk. And I don't know if that's quite right versus what he had actually in the movie. He, again, he was not a, a, a large actor by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, Sylvester Stallone was more of a ripped uh, character. And Sir, uh, Stallone as Rambo, Rambo was a very ripped, toned figure or toned character. Um, when we get to the arms... I just feel so bad. I, I really don't want to rip the figure apart because I really was looking forward to a Rambo figure. When you get to the arms, I don't know. Something's off. And I'm probably the only one that thinks this. But I feel like the arms, somehow the choice of plastic that they've gone with, it makes me feel like it, 
it, it wants to look like it's translucent even though it's not and something seems jarring about the plastic that they went with or the coloring to the plastic it's nicely detailed you've got all the tone and ripped uh, indication of his his muscles and the biceps and the forearm but something I feel as if off I mean I understand like if he's shirtless or if he's got exposed arms, he's probably got more of a tan in his arms than what, what he might have in his face. That I can maybe accept the fact that his arms look like this, but I really have a tough time with his, with this piece right here. The waist really should have been much more narrow. This whole area should have been much more narrow than what it was. Uh, as for paint, paint on both the legs and upper torso is done really, really well. He's also got some blood dried and perhaps still pouring down the side of his arm there. And again, the paint in the ammunition belts also look really, really well. But I feel like something's off. And maybe it's just for me, it's the proportion of the figure. He, maybe he just needed to be a little more narrow, or even you know, even had the neck just been a little longer, it may would it could have balanced out the rest of his figure. For me, that's the only gri gripe I could make is just something seems off on the proportions. Even the plastic, even the coloring on the plastic, I can justify, but something seems off on that torso. Uh, in the way of his articulation, now Rambo has. All the new articulation featured on the neck of figures, his head would bend up and down, left and right via ball joint. His arms would bend out, forward, back. He has a bend and rotation in the upper, in the uh, forearm. He has a rotation and bend. He actually has quite a lot of movement in his hand. As you can see there, he's got the upper torso swivel via what looks to be a ball joint. He has a rotation in the waist. Then the legs go forward, back, out. There's a bend and rotation at the leg, and the, fore, the lower leg, and a hinge. Looks like a ball joint also in the foot. I guess the thing is, if you, if you bend the figure a certain way, if you kind of have him posed a certain way, you might not notice the fact that he looks off. And I really feel bad saying that, because I, was, I had such... I had such an interest in getting this figure, and I still am happy with what NECA did with it. Even like the head, and I mentioned earlier again with the sheen of the head. If anyone was to say, well, you know what, he's sweating, he's got more of a slick on his face, I can understand that. Sure, that makes perfect sense to me. So really, the only gripe I could then make is still this area here. It just makes him look a little too stocky for my liking. Still, if you're a die-hard Rambo fan like I am, this is a really great figure to, to, to get. Um, I am wondering, though, if we're going to get a couple of variants, because obviously through the course of First Blood Part 1, First Blood Part 2, Rambo's had a few different appearances, a few different looks to him. So maybe we might get different versions of him. Maybe having him without the, the shirt, he might look a little more... Uh, skinnier, he might look a little more ripped than he does in this form. Rambo from First Blood Part 1, Spot's going to give him a 7.5. And again, Spot doesn't really mean to nitpick the figure as much as I do. From a collector end of it, I am very happy to have picked up this figure. From somebody who's reviewing this figure, I, I still feel like he's just a little too bulky at around this area here. Still, I would say he's worth picking up if you can find him. Today's Toy Spot, we're having a look at the NECA Rambo First Blood, John J. Rambo. Thanks for watching, guys. St certainly stick around as well. Spot's got more Toy Spots heading your way. See you next time.